Bible study this evening. We are studying one of the most colorful characters in the whole Bible, and that's Samson. And uh, we're going to have to see him die here tonight. I hate that. But uh, he's, he's been a great uh, blessing to a lot of people. Um, got a text from a buddy out in California a couple of days ago. He said, I'm digging your study on Samson. That sounds like California, don't it? Uh, he's probably watching tonight. Hey, brother. But uh, anyway, I don't know if you're digging it, but you should be getting helped and blessed, we'll put it that way. Um, Judges chapter 16. Now, we studied the book of Sam, uh, Judges on the life of Samson. This is an, You ought to study this. You really ought to study the lives of these men. And old Samson got himself in trouble. It's, it, this is strike three. The first one was he, he met that girl and married her, and she was a Philistine out of God's will. He's a picture of a Christian that was, will not do right, and his life ends in tragedy. That's what he's a picture of. But God blessed him and gave him grace. He messed around and, and left her because he's mad, and they come and burnt her and her daddy's house with fire, burnt them up, and then he saw this harlot and went and messed up again, and now here's Delilah. Third one, three strikes, you're out. And this is the woman that finally done him in. And you, we studied it in detail last week. So you shouldn't need to go over this again. But old Samson, she kept saying, how come you're so strong? How come you're so strong? And he said, bind me with three cords. Bam. Bind, put, put new ropes on me. Bam. And finally, he got a little closer, cut his hair. And there went his power. And the reason that was, because God said before he was born that a razor was never to touch his head. And she kept on and on, you don't love me. You don't love me. Uh, you don't love me. If you really loved me, you'd, that's what they'll use on you, fellas. That's what they'll use on you. Well, that's, that's manipulation on a poor man uh, for a woman to whine. All, you don't love me. Every time I don't get what I want, you don't love me. And he won't say, look, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be paying for this house and this light bill and, and, and putting up with all this junk all the time. But he didn't say, <laughs> amen. So, but you don't love me. That's sort of not fair. But that's what she did. And you learn a lot about human nature. Samson, you don't love me. If you really loved me, you'd do da 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 And uh, I don't know if it was love or lust or what, but man, he sure had something for her. She ruined him. I mean, he'd got a haircut in the wrong barbershop, brother. And she ruined him. If he'd have got him a decent one, it wouldn't have turned out like this. But you couldn't tell him, I saw him. I saw a woman. I saw, you couldn't tell him, a typical man. And uh, uh, notice what happened here in verse number 20. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times, just like I've always done, and shake myself. And he wist not, didn't realize, that the Lord was departed from him. Now let's talk about that just a second. You learn a lot of doctrine. You get a, you'll learn a lot of doctrine by just studying your Bible. In the Old Testament, the Lord would depart from somebody. Now, he don't depart from nobody in the New Testament. He don't depart from me, he don't depart from you. But he departed from. He depart, the Spirit of God came on Saul and departed from Saul. Never did come back. David prayed one time, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. See, we don't pray that prayer. We don't pray that prayer. We don't say, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He abides. He's, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We're in the body of Christ. You have to make that distinction between the New Testament body of Christ and the Old Testament set up when God dealt with Israel. I know, I know there'll be people say it's heresy, but that's the only way the Bible makes sense. You can't, it don't make sense no other way but to put Israel, church, and Gentile, them three groups, Jew, Gentile, and church. And a saved Jew or Gentile is in the church. But a lost Jew or Gentile is just a Jew or a Gentile. And God dealt with him. The, the Spirit of God, or the Lord, departed from him. He departed from him. And so this did it. This did it. This did it. And look here what happened to him. Verse 21, but the Philistines took him. But they got him this time and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he grinded in the prison. Isn't that awful? 
greatest, strongest man had ever been reduced to a life of a beast. Full of, you know, they, I mean, you always see it in the movies and stuff where this big old stick comes out way out through here like this, and he's going around like this, grinding at the mill around and grinding. And, put, and you know what? The, the old preachers preach it like this. Sin blinds, sin binds, and then sin grinds. And if you get sin in your life, it'll do the same thing to you. It'll blind you first. It'll bind you second. And then you'll be grinding at the mill. That's what will happen to you. Young man, young lady, mom, dad, young person. It'll, it'll get you an office mess you've ever been in your life. Every drug addict started out thinking, I can handle this. I'm not going to get hooked. I, I can drink a little bit. It won't bother me. I can smoke a little pot. I can. Every one of them. Nobody starts out to be a, a demonic suicide. Everybody starts out thinking, I can handle it. And you can't, I can't, you can't, nobody else can. So he ground at the, meat, at the prison house. Here's Samson in prison. My, my. You know, some of the men of the Bible's in prison. A lot of Paul, Paul and Silas got locked up. Barnabas for doing the right thing, for preaching. Daniel uh, and Shadrach and them, uh, a lot of them guys, uh, Joseph went to jail or prison or somewhere for doing the right thing. Samson got in there for doing the wrong thing. He got in there for doubting God and his life. And, and, and he, he, he was in there grinding like an animal, like an ox or something. Verse 22, how be it, I like this, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. They put razors on his head and shaved him bald-headed. And, buddy, it wasn't long till little sprouts started coming out. His hair started growing again. And them guys didn't, they didn't pay no attention to it. They thought, ah, he's harmless. He ain't going to hurt nothing. But little by little, his strength started coming back. And, you know, that's a, I'm glad that's in there. I'm glad it's in the Bible. Or you can mess your life up and lose your blessings, but thank God you can get them back. The Lord's a God of second chances. Now, he paid a dear price physically every way you can imagine, but his, his life was, he, 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 his hair started coming back. So Samson's starting to get strong again. And I think he realized it. I think one day he was pushing that thing around there. He thought, man, this thing's getting easy. I must be getting in shape. And the next thing you know, he's taking one finger, walking around there. He said, I'm, every time they come in there, I'm going to Of course, he couldn't see them, could he? He heard them. Uh, they come in, Samson, you at work? Yes, sir. This thing's killing me. As soon as they left, he'd take that one finger and go around like that. And they thought, my goodness. He thought, my strength's coming back. My strength's coming back. And let me tell you tonight, Maybe you're a Christian here tonight and the devil's threw you for a loop and you've been through a rough time and he's, he stole your power and strength. You can get your strength back. You can. You can be strong in the Lord. You can be strong in the Lord again, but you've got to want it. You've got to hunger for it. You've got to hunt for it like hidden treasure. So, so here he goes. He's, he's, uh, he's grinding at the mill. Little by little by little, his strength comes back. He gets a little stronger. And then verse 23 they have a big, huge United Nations meeting and all ISIS was there and Sudan, uh, Sudan and Saudi Arabia and Kim Jong, Jong, Young, whatever his name is and all them crazy people from uh, Korea and North Korea and China and South Korea and Japan and everywhere. Uh, they, they was all gathered in there and, and they all thousands and thousands and thousands of them and this, let's look at this scene, how this fell, unfolds. Then the lords of the Philistines, 23, gathered them together, a communal movement, for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their, their God. Now that sounds like Dagon, but it ain't Dagon, it's Dagon. And Dagon, their God, was a God that they worshipped in the Old Testament that was like, had like a body of a fish Ain't that right? Is that right, Brother Derek? Head of a man or the other way around. Body of a man, head of a... I think he had a body like a fish. You've seen them pictures of it. And the head of a man, the fish god, they worshipped him. I don't know why. Is a demon, I reckon. And they, they called him Dagon, and they rejoiced and said, 
Dagon has delivered Samson into our hand. Now the truth was, Dagon didn't do nothing. But Samson gave the enemies of the Lord great occasion to blaspheme. And they took credit for him. Isn't it sad that a lot of times we as Christians mess up and cause a bunch of mess and they look at it like God's not real or God's not powerful and everything. And yet it ain't that way. You can't blame the Lord for everything his kids do. I've heard people say, well, I, I just look at Christians and I don't even want to go to church. You can't, don't get mad at him because his kids don't act right. Amen. My kids don't always act right. Don't blame that on me. I tried. <laughs> some, some of you did too. Uh, but you can't blame the, their kids' action on the Lord. Um, so uh, they said, Dagon has delivered Samson in our hand. Now this is the same God that over in 1 Samuel, they brought the ark in there and stood in front of him and he fell down and broke his neck and, and they cut him up and got rid of him. He was nothing. He was nothing. Isn't it weird that them people in the Old Testament had a God like, let's just say that this pumpkin, man, I think this thing getting old, is Dagon. And, and here we're worshiping, oh, Dagon, our God, you have delivered Samson into our hand. Oh, Dagon, our God. And they said, we're going to move, move into a bigger temple. Somebody had to pick Dagon up and carry him over. Now, look, that's God, see, that's God. And they believe they can carry their gods around. That's, that's how messed up people can get. Do you know there's people still in the world tonight that worship stuff like that? Rocks, trees, uh, images, stuff like that. Uh, listen, you might as well worship a pumpkin, brother, as, as to worship anything. Side Lord, it ain't going to do you no good. Now this pumpkin here, is that his old dag on? I'm going to throw it. Now, you catch it, brother. You ready? He's coming. He's like, All right. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to throw him right now. But let's just say that was Dagon. Old Dagon, you delivered. The truth is God delivered him into their hands because he wouldn't live right. And Dagon got the glory. You see how that when we mess up, the devil gets glory? The devil got credit for that. Oh, man, we could have never overcome Samson. He killed a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. He knocked people's brains out. He carried the gates of the city 20 miles. Man, and, but Dagon delivered him into their hand. That ain't right. God delivered him into their hand. God, and if he'd have stayed right with God, he'd have whooped Dagon and that whole crowd. But his strength started coming back, and his strength started coming back, and his strength started coming back. And verse 25 said, or 24, said, Our God hath delivered him in our hands. The destroyer of our country which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson. You got his number? No? Well, somebody go in there and, and, and get him, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. Now, I'm assuming, I've always read this scripture, said Samson, come in and they said, let him make sport. What do you think he's doing? Playing ball? No. They, they made him out there to mock him. He was blind and probably they took spears and, hey, Samson. Then somebody come up behind him, bam, hit him in the head like that. Just making a joke out of, out of Samson, God, the man that had slew them. So now you're so big and tough, boy. Where's your job on the ass, man? How come you can't kill no more lions and get honey out of it? Bam! And slapped him up beside the head and made a sport out of it. Listen, them people make some evil sports, people. Evil sports. And the gladiators and all that Roman, all that mess from a long time ago, ancient Rome. And buddy, old Samson and all that. And I can imagine it started coming up in Samson. I hate these Philistines. They hate God, they hate, and they sat down between them two pillars. And that big old building had two big gigantic pillars that was held the whole building up. And and Samson told that little boy, he said, "Where's my guy at? Where's my guy? Guy? Oh, there he is. Hey, son, take me. Can you? Will you take me over there and just put me between them two pillars?" And the little boy led him over there and led him over there. And Samson got on him like this right here. Buddy, the second story's up there and the third story up there. Thousands and thousands of people. It'd be like, it'd be like a big rock concert. And buddy, he, that old boy said this. Let's look what he did. And they said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and it came to pass. They said, make a sport. 
And he went between the pillars in verse 26. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof 3,000 men and women that beheld why Samson made sport. That was way up on the top looking down on him, laughing at him, looking down on God's people, looking down on the things of the Lord. And Samson made sport. And old Samson said, I'm all right. I'm going to pray one last time. And old Samson said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. What a prayer. That old boy leaned on them pillars like that, said, God, basically, you know what he said? God, you know I've messed up. Lord, I ain't fit to shoot. Lord, it ain't no wonder I'm in the mess I'm in, and I'm sorry for the mess I've made, and these people have punched out my two eyes. God, if you'd just strengthen me one more time, just one more time, Lord, I don't want to go back to grinding at the mill. I'll just die with these people. I'll just give my life. And right here, and he bowed here. My, wouldn't you like to see this? Wouldn't you like to see this in 3D? Good night, that would have been something. There's old Samson. They're dancing around, playing rap music, all dancing all around there, jumping up and down. Uh, you know, MC Hammer was leading them, and, and here come Jay-Z and Kanye and the Kardashians and, and everybody else. They're going, ha, 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 woo, look at a stupid old blind man. What's your problem, blind man? And they was hollering, and that old boy, isn't that like a movie? Every movie you ever watched got its plot right out of there. The wicked woman who's the temptress, the strong man who fell to the good temptress, the, the avenging, blood, payback, underdog wins, all them plots that you, every movie you ever watched, the plot comes out of that book. But Hollywood perverts it. So he takes his hand like that right there and he bows his head and buddy, all of a sudden the Spirit of God come on him one more time. And buddy, he pulled on them things and pulled on them things and every one of them began to crack. And while there's a laughing, and about that time, they started shaking. They said, whoa, we're having an earthquake. Earthquake. Everybody hold. And they didn't have nowhere to go. And that thing began to fall. And I want you to look here what happened, people. Now the house was full, verse number 27. And 28 said, and Samson called on the Lord. One more time, Lord. 29, Samson took hold of the two middle pillars. Not pillow, pillar, like you sleep on. Uh, just kidding. Upon the house stood, upon which it was born up, of the one with his right hand, the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all of his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Good night. My goodness, wouldn't you like seeing that? That old boy got down like that, and them things began to crack. Pow. All of a sudden, the foundation of that house started. Them people started coming down, screaming, hollering. It was worse than the Titanic sinking, brother. I mean, there's thousands of people squished and mashed. Just like a mighty earthquake hit that place and killed every one of them people in there. And old Samson died with the Philistines. That's a tragic end of what could have been one of the greatest men in the Bible. Now, you've got to give it to him. He did, he did do some good. He killed the Lord's enemies. He, he and, and we'll, we'll say more about that in a minute, but he wound up a suicide. And um, this brings up the study of suicide. And I've had it asked, I don't know how many times, and listen to me careful what I'm getting ready to say to y'all. You'll learn some. If you'll study the Bible, you'll learn stuff. Samson is a picture of a person that just just messes up everything and finally kills herself. He died with the Philistines. Somebody said, I've had it asked me over and over and over, if you kill yourself, do you still go to heaven? Every time somebody asks me, if you kill yourself, do you go to heaven? You know what my answer is? Depends on if you're saved or not. That's the right answer. What if you gossip and die? What if you have a lustful thought and then die? 
Because that's what everybody says. Well, see, if you kill yourself, you don't have time to ask forgiveness. Let me tell you something, people. You are not saved because of your ability to keep asking forgiveness. You're, if that's the case, you better pray constantly 24 hours a day because the chances of you dying with absolute no sin in your life is slim to none. Amen? You're not kept saved. And, and that's what a lot of people believe. They believe that you're kept saved by continually confessing. And if you kill yourself, you didn't have time to ask forgiveness, so you die and go to hell, even if you've been saved 30 years. That's false doctrine. That's not true. What if, what if you gossiped about somebody and then you died, had a heart attack? What if you forgot to confess something and then you died? What about people in the rest homes, you know, and stuff, and get backslid and they go? Now, the truth is, if you are a part of Jesus Christ's body, you don't, you don't do anything to earn that. You don't do anything to keep that. You don't do anything to get saved except trust the Lord. You don't say anything to stay saved. Just trust the Lord. And trust in the Lord don't keep you saved. You're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ when you put your faith in it. So, so please, get your doctrine straight. You talk to people at work and everything, you should know that. You say, well, uh, what happened to Samson, preacher? Turn your Bible to Hebrews 11 and I'll show you what happened to him. He went to Abraham's bosom. He went to Abraham's bosom. Then the Lord emptied it out when he died and took him on up to the presence of God. You say, you mean tell me Samson went to heaven? He sure did. Hebrews chapter 11 is the great hall of faith in the Old Testament. It is the roll call of the greatest people of faith in the Old Testament. And it said, verse 13, look at verse 13, these all died in faith. You know what Samson did? Old Samson was getting right with God. Is he, Lord, remember me. I'm sorry for the way I've lived. Strengthen me this one time. Bam. Now watch this. And he names off all these people. Starts out in Genesis, and Enoch, on down to Abraham, Sarah, on down there to uh, uh, Cain, and Moses, and uh, Moses forsook, forsook Egypt. Rahab, in verse 31. And look at verse 32, Hebrews 11:32. There are three characters in our study of Judges that pop up in this verse. Gideon, Jephthah, and Samson. Now, old Gideon, we're pretty sure about him. Old Jephthah, he's the one that made that awful vow. This old boy shows up in, in, in a roll call of faith. And there's thousands of people in the Old Testament. God must have thought pretty highly of Jephthah and Gideon and of Samson. Look at verse 32. And of Samson who through faith, verse 33, wrought righteousness, done this, done that, done this, done that, done this. And, and, and it said in verse number 40, verse 38 said the world wasn't worthy of them. And verse 40 said God provided something better for us that they without us should not be made perfect. They ain't going to be perfect till we get there. Now, this means this. This means this. Now, don't ever think about committing suicide. Somebody asked me, they said, Brother Danny, you ever thought about killing yourself? And I said, yeah, I have. I, I, it didn't, maybe not more than five seconds. I like, I don't like to hurt. And, and I, I've hurt enough in my heart. I don't want to. Uh, uh, you say, you ever thought about killing yourself? I sure have. I guess all of us, if, if you're over 25, that's crossed your mind before, right? You think, I'll just kill myself, Lord. But you don't really mean that. You don't really mean it. I know this guy used to call me all the time. I'll probably get in trouble for saying this. He used to call me all the time saying, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. And I'd beg, please don't, please don't. And, and uh, he said, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. I said, no, come on, come on. And I think he just liked me petting him. And one day he called me and said, I'm going to kill myself. And I said, well, I got a gun. You want to borrow it? I shouldn't have said that. That is not right. Because if he really had, if I'd have felt bad. <laughs> I'd have felt really bad if he'd have done that. But I got tired of him whining all the time about going to kill himself. <laughs> and uh, 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 you, you don't, that, suicide, suicide is the most, you want to borrow my gun, Miss Donna? You better not. You, you don't commit suicide. We need you. Huh? <laughs> That'd be murder. Was he the one that kicked out and made you live under the bridge? How many of them kicked you out and made you live under a bridge? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but you was going to help him, right? 
You, go, you say, he said, I'm going to commit suicide. And you say, can I have that in writing? <laughs> Will you promise? <laughs> no, that ain't the way you're supposed to do. The truth is, suicide is the most selfish thing a person can do. Because it means I'm not thinking about my family. I'm not thinking about nobody but me. Now, I'll admit, things can get mighty bad. Things can get bad, buddy. I'd hate to be grinding at the mill and blind and Philistine sticking spears in me and slapping me up the back of the side of the head. And, and sometimes you've got to be careful if you're healthy and got money and in your right mind of saying, oh, these people need to straighten, these people drug. But, you know, you can get in a mess where you'll think anything. And you can get in a mess where you consider doing anything. You can. Don't ever think it can't happen to you. And the devil can push you over the edge. I've heard people say, well, a Christian couldn't do that. They most certainly could. Most certainly could. You can get to the place where you're hurting so bad or you're tore up so bad that you'll take your own life. And uh, that, that's not the, not the thing to do. You ain't supposed to do that. Samson did it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, when you think about the mess he was in, Lordy mercy. Um, he's, he's in the hall of fame. So Samson, was he saved like me and you are saved? Of course not. He was not in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is only the church. But he, went, he, was a, he was safe and he did go to Abraham's bosom and the Lord took him to heaven after the blood was shed. So if you want to, I'm not going to take up a whole time tonight We'll stop here just a second. And I know the folks watching online can't do this, but that, they should be here. And uh, I know y'all, it's a long way, but uh, let's talk about that for a minute. So shoot me your questions on suicide, whatever, since we're, we're on the subject tonight. Anybody, right quick. Mm. But she meant to. She meant to. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. No, you don't. Right, right. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, all of us know people like that. And I didn't mean just to joke us off like, I mean, to go like it wasn't serious. If you know somebody who's like that, you know, um, they need help. And there's warning signs. I guess some of y'all studied it more than I have. What's all these warning signs that somebody's... Yeah, lock herself up in a room or something. Mm, that's sad. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know, but you can get aggravated with people. You don't know if they're just wanting attention or they're serious. If they're serious and need help, you better give them some help. Oh, I've had a lot of people say, pray for my husband, pray for my wife. They're suicidal, pray for me, I'm suicidal. I've had a lot of people tell me that, lots of people. It ain't nothing to joke around with. Normally, a woman, usually a man will do it with a gun or something, but a woman, she don't like a big bloody mess, so she takes pills. They don't like a mess. That's weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? Yeah. 
Right. You could look at it like that. I've heard that too. He deliberately killed himself to kill the enemies at the same time. So he like gave his life for his country like soldiers do. And you can look at it like that. Really? Uh, who, who lived to tell that? That didn't die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. If they really, let me ask y'all something. Don't you think that about three fourths of the time, people don't really want to kill themselves because they just take enough pills to make them go to the hospital? I heard about this guy. Right. Yeah, guy went in the emergency room, shot himself in the belly, and fell right in the emergency room. Now what? Why would they, why you, they want attention. They want attention. Good night. If I want attention that bad, I want attention, but not that bad. What's that? Son, I'm telling you, I felt like I ain't loved, but not that bad. I can do without it. I can do without love. If I shoot, shoot myself in the belly. <laughs> I, I've, I just, it's hard for me to get that in my head. I've hurt, I've hurt, and, and I thought about it, but like three seconds. You know how I, I always tell my girls, I said, if, I, I, I will, if I'm going to commit suicide, I'm going to go 100 mile an hour down the road and stick my head out the sunroof of my car like that and then hit a bridge. I'm not going to say fix it to where I might live in a wheelchair in the in a, in a rest of my life. We're going to do it right. Plus, you get double insurance if you do it like that. If you take your gun and shoot yourself, think about your family, you brat. Uh, if you, huh? Three seconds, that's what I thought. Cause, <laughs> no, no, I thought if I was going to do it, because you, if, you, if you shoot yourself, my goodness, I kill your insurance. Make it look like an accident. Lord, I'm going to catch it. I don't know if we ought to put this online, Andy. That's exactly right. Hopelessness. Mm. That's true. Amen. Amen. Victoria, close. Thank you, Victoria. No, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If Samson had had your iPad with them little ear things, yeah, he'd have been fine. She's studying up on all this child psychology and everything. I think you're a bunch of nuts. Yeah, oh, God. We don't need no more books. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. The truth is, that's right. You do help. You feel like there's no way out. I'm smothering. I'm drowning. There's no hope for me. That's right. Right. That's right. Amen. And you know, I've been preaching all my life, y'all. I mean, since I was a kid, I've been preaching. And I didn't realize till, you know, last 10 or 15 years that you have to make yourself think right. 
because if you don't, the devil will have you thinking all kinds. Oh, poor me, I'm pitiful. Uh, look at me, all the problems I'm having. No, and he'll get you going backwards in a negative mode. And you start thinking, Lord, in mercy, I feel good. I eat today. I, my family's here. Everybody's saved. I ought to be shouting. You ain't kidding. Right. Amen. Right. I don't. I don't mean to play this off like it's some kind of joke, y'all. It's serious. You might have somebody in your family that's did it or may do it. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a couple tell me that and they say this happened, that happened I was raped, I was, I was molested I was left outside I was beat. all right now tell me how I ought to feel good that's tough and I just tell them Jesus loved you and died for you and trying you know because we can't imagine you know we can't imagine that I guess none of us can anybody else right quick but either way you look at it, we see a tragic ending of a man's life that could have been a lot different if he'd have stayed right with God. One thing you notice about Samson, you never, ever see him confessing his sin, admitting he'd done wrong, nothing like that. He'd just go from one thing to another, pick up something, blam, kill a thousand people, steal what he wanted, steal foxes, tie their tails together, turn them loose in the cornfield, there's a harlot, there's another woman, and I'm, you can't live like that. Look, look how he ended up. You can't live like that. And he's a picture of a Christian that would not get right and died an early death. Anybody else? Right quick. Yeah. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Yeah, he kept on and on. Daddy, get her for me. She pleaseth me well. And daddy said, can't you, his mom said, can't you find a girl that lives around here that believes like us and lives right? And he said, no, I want her. Oh, boy, bad mistake, bad mistake. Yeah, he was, he was a brat, long, curly, probably, blocks. And he, man, he, he probably good looking. I mean, I mean, it's attractive a strong man's attractive to a woman, of course. And boy, he, he, it was a disaster. His life was a disaster. But we only, we're going to finish this up. And judges, we only got two more probably. Next week, we're talking about Micah and them two chapters. And then we've done 19 and 20, you know, several months ago. Then 21, so about two more studies and we're done. Brother. Good question. I didn't even read that verse, did I? It's, I'm assuming they did. I'm assuming they did. He judged Israel 20 years, and the judge like was like the, the governor or boss of Israel. It does say he judged Israel 20 years. <whistles> He's a mess, wasn't he? Yeah, that's that's a that'll preach, mommy. Why does our ruler smack people with the jawbone of an ass, <laughs> mommy? How come how come our ruler's out with a harlot? Well, we got a lot of them like that now, don't we? A lot of them, most of them. Is that right? One what? Like mayor or whatever? Yeah. You think they're going to judge righteous judgment? No way. Ah, Lord. That's why I tell you, people, this country going to get it. It's going to get it. You just better pray, hide me, old blessed rock of ages.
because this country's going to get it. You better get all the sin out of your life. Quit watching dirty movies. Quit sneaking around doing it. You better quit it because the country's going to get it. You're going to call on God and he ain't going to be there, I mean, you know, symbolically. Anybody else? Right quick. Because people think if you have to confess all of the time and you have to confess and confess and confess and if you die and don't confess it, then you have to go to hell because no, they say no sin will enter into heaven. And they don't understand that that's why your body dies because it's got sin in it. Your body don't go to heaven. Your soul does. That which is born of God does not commit sin. It, that's your soul inside you. It goes to heaven. Paul said, I know more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So they think that you have to be perfect in order to get to heaven, keep your sins confessed up all the time. They're confused. Huh? Yeah, you're right. A lot of people think that's an unpardonable sin, suicide. I've heard people say that. That's very, very shallow Bible study. Very shallow. A person who believes suicide's unpardonable sin is ain't even the first base study in the Bible. They're they're in kindergarten, really. Anybody else? All right. Let's learn a lesson from Samson. Keep your heart right. When you do wrong, confess it. Do right, and God will bless you for it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do thank you for getting to study the life of this great man of faith. Lord, we know he was a failure in so many ways. Help us to learn from his mistakes that we don't make them. Bless our church. Cause it to be just what you want it to be. As we meet to go visiting Saturday, I pray the Holy Ghost would come and take charge of every life, every heart. Do with us and for us what ought to be done, and we'll thank you for it. Bless everybody. Dismiss us in your love. In Jesus' name, amen.